Who's this? Yeah. Hi, Sandy Pellin. I'm at MIT. Uh, I came in just recently to this conference, and I was amazed because my first job was doing satellite mapping of land use, finding beavers from outer space was my very first job. And I was, <laughs> isn't that crazy? Uh, and I helped develop uh, the car monitoring systems for the LEAF, right? So I know a little bit about cars also. And I uh, also serve as a, uh, on the board for Motorola Mobility, Telefonica, and some other things. Uh, but I also um, spend a lot of time with the World Economic Forum, really, thinking about privacy. Because what all these things have is these sort of issues that you just brought up, and more so. And uh, I think that a couple of nice things have come that I find promising. I tend to be an optimist. Uh, one is, is that the, from the conversation about privacy, uh, at the forum, which included you know, the, the Justice Commissioner of the EU and the Chairman of the Federal Trade Commission in the U.S., we have a view now that uh, individuals should have ownership rights over this data uh, that is about them, and that the sort of uh, things where there is opt-in informed consent, which is difficult to achieve, but that that has to be a basic principle, that the ability to audit data uh, so is it being used in the context and with the permissions that you gave? The ability to revoke permissions uh, is something that we find now industry broadly accepting and in fact being deployed as standard practice in several companies. Um, and, and so, so there, there's uh, progress there in reaching sort of an idea of what the world would look like, although there's some really hard problems, some of which you just brought up. Um, a couple of things that I've seen recently, like just Wednesday, we had uh, what is really, I think, the first attempt to create a data commons uh, in the world. We convinced the company Orange to release all of their data for the uh, Ivory Coast, which you will remember had some difficulties just recently. Um, and uh, we thought long and hard about it, and together with the UN Global Pulse and World Economic Forum and some other partners, came up with a way of aggregating and anonymizing, quote unquote, the data uh, in such a way that you could do things with it, but it was not an immediate threat. Uh, and there's some tricks to how you do that, and also the legal framework under which you release it. We convinced 86 universities around the world to look at the data, both from a privacy threat point of view, but also from a public good point of view. We found, one group found, a way to improve transit time in the capital city by 10% by adding only a few small bus routes uh, to, to the critical places. So that's a huge public good. Uh, another group found a way to reduce uh, HIV transmission um, through campaigns that were directed to paths of transmission that they were unaware of before. Uh, again, a public good that's fairly clear. Um, there are some other things in that data that are controversial. I think they fall under the land of, of uh, transparency, but there's a lot of uh, the, the war that they fought has to do with ethnic tensions, and there's a lot of propaganda on both sides, and you can actually tell which side's right from the data, which is going to cause problems. <laughs> okay. but, but, you know, what's interesting is, is that companies like Orange, Telefonica, Verizon are really moving towards creating a data common for which a lot of public goods can come from. And it looks like there's at least a practical, although not perfect, path forward for doing that. The other thing that's happening is, is these same sort of companies are uh, taking the next step and really looking at the ramifications of the Human Rights Declaration in the EU and the Consumer Privacy Bill of Rights here in this country uh, and creating personal data stores where this notion that you control data about you is is made real, and the auditing of data uh, so that you can have a public good. So it's this model where there is a, a commons, which is fairly freely available, and then there is controlled, informed opt-in and retraction by individuals, and those data uh, are uh, things that, from which you can get the greatest public good, for instance, uh, specific things about your medical condition, specific things about uh, all sorts of aspects of your life. Um, they're also the most dangerous, of course, but the fact that you have control over them at least gives you some transparency into what's going on, and uh, there are some technical approaches for some of the things that are um, 
jurisdictional approach uh, problem. So the way we often frame this is, is if you really rolled this system out in Syria, would you be happy? Right? That's a good way to ask it. So not just a, a benign government, but if you had a malicious government, could they use it easily uh, to do things that were nefarious? And uh, I think there's ways to design things that are good, not perfect. And uh, it's important that we move towards the good, because right now we're in the terrible. Okay? Uh, and I guess that's what I have to say. <laughs>